G'day, Ben from Duck Plain Chicken here with a new build series. So this time we are back to the Macross universe and we will be building the 172nd destroyed phalanx. Now this is uh, produced by Wave and is a fantastic kit. There was actually a tomahawk that was done in the same scale by Wave as well, which I have already built and painted and absolutely love this kit. Now the phalanx is very similar to the tomahawk. The um, essentially the legs, the waist are all very similar. Even the body, there's a lot of sort of common parts. The main difference is sort of the arm. So on the tomahawk, of course, you've got these massive weapons. And for the um, for the flanks, you've got these big missile launchers. Now I've already built up the kit, just snapped together, and also glued. Uh, some bits that were um, that needed gluing. Now I haven't put in. There's a few detail parts missing, like clear bits in the in the head here. There's also some sort of clips that go over the uh, you know, on the shins here. Um, but the kit itself goes together really well, beautifully engineered. There's just a couple of things that you need to be aware of. So I'm just going to take apart. Oh, let's just grab the arm for one. Now, I don't have all the missiles in here. I've just got two to sort of uh, give you a quick idea of what's going on. But, just to take some of this apart, just to show you there's some things to be aware of. First of all, I found with my particular pop of the kit that these pegs going into the corresponding holes were actually really tight in a lot of places. So what I've done is I have literally just cut them off at an angle. Um, and I've cut them down quite short, you can sort of see in the back there. And the reason for that is just it makes it a lot easier to sort of pull apart for um, painting purposes. Now saying that, the kit is really well designed as far as reducing the number of uh, seam lines. Certainly in the legs, most of the other versions of this sort of um, mech that I've built, that's sort of two halves, and of course you've got a seam line to deal with down here, but this kit is designed so well that, you know, basically where the, the pieces sort of meet, um, they're natural. Um, yeah, natural panel lines, if you like. So I've done a lot of seam work as well. So you can sort of see, I've just used a little bit of uh, putty in here just to clean up those seams. So there was a little bit of seam work done, probably more so on the leg. So things like this top piece, that's actually two halves that go together. So you can just sort of see where the seam is. I used a little bit of putty where you have two halves that join together, like these gray bits, they actually do meet reasonably well. So you can see I've sort of done a little bit of work on the seam there. The other thing to be aware of is that there's a clear piece that goes in here, so behind it I'm just gonna paint silver. It looks like I can't really sort of deal with that seam while keeping all these um, gray bits separately to, to paint them. So I can't really fix up that seam. And if I show you on the on the tomahawk, what it sort of looks like, you can sort of see once the clear piece is over it. And I think that's fine. It's literally the only sort of seam that's visible. The other thing that I want to do is I won't be using the lacquer acrylics for this job. Because I've already painted up the tomahawk, I wanted the phalanx to be the same painted in the same way so that they look good together on the shelf. They look like a, you know, they belong to the same sort of set. So I'll be using predominantly Vallejo water-based acrylics to paint this and I'll be using a similar sort of color scheme as I did for the Tomahawk. So there's a couple of other areas that you need to be aware of that will have seams. So these pieces that are basically the heel, you can see the seams there that I've cleaned up. 
So there is some seam work to do, but it really is quite minimal. Um, I'll show you know, these grey bits. You can see where I've put a bit of putty in there and cleaned it up. A lot of this stuff's not even going to be seen, but uh, normally I clean it up just in case. Where it's really problematic doing seam you know, clean up is, of course, we have these lines going horizontally across the seam. So, you know, it's where you might use a scribing tool or something like I did. Um, but just to sort of show you as well how they, uh, they deal with, um, you know, part seams is they'll have the two parts go together like that and then they'll have another piece that goes over top that covers the seam so really um, you know really sort of neat way of um, dealing with part seams the other thing to be aware of too on the back of the on the back of the leg there's this piece down near the foot and this actually is in two halves and the instructions say that you sort of put the leg together and then you put these two halves across it but the problem is there's a pretty unsightly seam that's sort of in the middle here so what I've done is and if I can get it off it is a tight fit but you can see that there's two holes on each side here and there were uh, pegs on both sides of these and so basically you would take the two halves and sort of slide the pegs into the holes and they'd meet up at the back here. What I've chosen to do is cut the pegs off and it's actually quite a tight sort of um, pressure fit that you can actually slide this over and it clips into place. So that way you can actually deal with this seam here. So it just tidies it up a bit more. That's really the only bit of the kit that's sort of uh, maybe a little bit tricky as far as the you know trying to get it off again it might be a bit tricky so another example of how they have uh, dealt with you know parts meeting together and then covering those seams uh, you can see here these two parts they they clamp together and then this piece goes over the front to cover up those seams so you know again just a really good um, good example of the way this this kit's been engineered this piece comes in two halves, so a couple of seams to clean up, but again, a lot of it's not actually seen. So as far as the kit assembly goes, very straightforward, beautifully engineered. So the next thing to look at is the colours that I will be using. And it's probably easy if I show you the on the instructions, the sort of uh, colours that they've illustrated here. So for the the tan colour or the light brown, I'll be using um, Model Air 71027 light brown. There are green parts on the um, missile launchers, and for that I'll be using Vallejo Mecha colour dark green. For the red of the missiles, I wanted to go with a fairly bright red, so I'll be going with. Uh, Vallejo Mecha Color, just red, 69008. There are also some brown parts, so uh, on the uh, rotational parts of the arm and also I think these are missile exhaust, I don't know where the missile files off, the exhaust is sort of shot out the back here, I'm not, not entirely sure, um, but they're brown as well, so I'll be using um, 71.249 NATO Brown. For the grey parts, uh, for predominantly on the, the legs, so uh, around the ankles and sort of around the, the knee joint, I'll be using the Ultimate um, Modeling Products Primat Grey, so I'll just be using that as is. And I will be priming everything else in this um, Ultimate Modeling Product products black um, this is the gloss black but I'll be just using the the straight black one of uh, the really good tricks that I picked up from someone on YouTube and I'm sorry I can't remember where it came from but for this stuff um, you need to be at a slightly higher pressure for your airbrush I mean usually I'm sort of firing this stuff out at around 20 psi 
Um, but one thing that really helps this stuff flow really well is just to get a container with some warm water in it and just have this sitting in it for a while. So warming the bottle warms their primer and it makes it flow a bit better through the airbrush. So I tend to find that that, that helps. So the next step for me is to basically disassemble what I've just uh, shown you, put all the parts on clips and sticks and whatever I need to set them up ready for priming and painting. I've done the initial painting of all the parts and I have given them a gloss coat using all clad aqua gloss. And just a warning, if you're using aqua gloss from all clad, don't make the same mistake that I did and don't shake it. It actually says on the bottle not to shake it. I don't know, it's something to do with the, uh, the chemical compound, but um, as soon as you shake it up, what it does effectively turns it into more of a matte coat. So I learned that mistake years ago when I first started using it. So just make sure you don't um, <laughs> you don't give it a good shake. But it does actually give a really good gloss surface. So you can see that there. Now this is just a utility coat that I'll use to do all the panel lining that I want to do in here. So it's not like I want this to have the final look of it, you know, glossy. But it does um, does do a reasonable job. So a couple of things I wanted to sort of point out first, um, you know, while I was doing the painting and preparing parts. Uh, first of all, there are a couple of aerials that go on the side of the head and you can sort of just see them poking up the top of the head there. Now, they're all molded as um, individual pieces, but the, the actual antenna bit, um, mine came in the box snapped. So this is sort of what remains of it. So what I had to do was take the base of it, which is this little L-shaped part, and I took a 0.5 millimeter brass rod and basically drilled a hole, 0.5 mil hole in the L-shaped base and put the bit of, um, bit of 0.5 mil rod into that hole and super glued it in place and then I've just painted it. So you can see the end here, this is where I've had the clip. Um, you know, so that bit hasn't been painted, but that's fine because I'll cut it off a bit shorter anyway. So just be careful uh, if you're, you know, get this kit. The actual aerials are a little bit more, a little bit fragile and look, quite frankly, <laughs> Plastic is always problematic when you're talking about these sort of things. Um, there's actually another, you know, little bit that sort of broke off, but you can see there's a, um, a gate there. And of course, trying to sand off a gate on something so narrow can be really quite problematic. So um, sometimes it's just easier to use a bit of wire or use a bit of rod and it makes it look nice and clean. So as you can see, the uh, light brown colour I used came up really well. It's a colour that uh, I used on the previous on the previous model I did the Tomahawk, so I know it should match. I've just used UMP Primer Grey for some of these leg uh, joints. These do come in two halves, so I did deal with the seam one. It looks like I did a reasonable good job. There's still some issues in these slats here, but. I'm hoping that a lot of that will actually be covered up with the rest of the leg piece. So I don't think it'll be too noticeable. For the cockpit, I have done a really rough job on this. And the reason being is I know from the previous one that literally all you see is that. When you lift the lid on it, you see the top of the helmet, the top of the chair, that's it. So the rest of it is sort of just literally painted grey and white with a, a grey enamel wash over it. So nothing to, um, I didn't spend a lot of time on that. And I'm not going to display this thing with the hood open anyway. Uh, the green for the caps on the uh, missile launchers. Of course, they're really glossy at the moment, but once they go matte, I think they'll be a nice, nice choice. And of course, I've gone with the gloss because I will be doing the um, enamel washers to pick out all the detail. And then these pieces I painted in a red-brown color. It's sort of a nice 
dark brown and that'll probably darken up even a little bit more once I get a matte coat on it. Now this is the plate where all the missile heads get stuck to so I've only put one here at the moment there's actually a whole I've got a whole swag of these things look <laughs> there's a heap of them um, and so what I'm going to do is they're just painted with a red but I might pick out the details on the top just with a bit of black enamel wash um, just to, to pick out those details I've done the majority of the decals on all the pieces and I just want to point out a couple of a couple of spots that you just need to be aware of when you're putting the decals. So most of them are pretty straightforward. Most of them go on reasonably flat surface. Uh, these yellow ones, they sort of follow the contours. Make sure you follow the uh, number callouts on the instructions because they do go a particular way. But there's a couple of things that I just want to point out where they can be a bit um, bit of trouble. First of all, we've got this one here, which goes over two halves. Uh, there's also another one on the other side, which is one of these uh, yellow stripes. So what I tend to do is I tend to assemble it, as you can see there. I'll put the decal down, and then I'll use the uh, micro sole to soften the decal, and then I'll take an extremely sharp um, blade and cut down the middle of it while it's still a bit soft so that's one thing to be um, aware of and I'll, I'll do the other one here because I haven't done this one yet so I'll show you how I do it on this one let's move these other pieces out of the way so I've already had the decal soaking for a bit of course I need to make sure it's up the right way it does actually say missile pod on it so you want the text to be facing the correct way I'm going to bring the other one in just so that it's uh, I can use it as reference as to where it actually sits so that I can shuffle this around and uh, unfortunately I think I need to get this one damp again but that's why decals, water slide decals are so much better than stickers. Because at least you do have the ability to dampen decal and move it around again. Here we go. Okay, so over with the tool. That's pretty good. They're not they're not actually shown sort of you know close up together. Uh, probably needs to come down just a little bit looking at it. And I'll just use a cotton bud to squeeze out all the water underneath the decal. And then I'll take some microsol and I'll soften this decal up so that it's easier to I really want this stuff to get underneath, certainly in that gap. Now it's not likely to pull right down into that panel line until I've actually made the cut down the middle. So I'm going to sit that aside for a bit, let that uh, soften up. Get that one out of the way. And then I can talk about some of these other troublesome areas. So the hatches on the missile pods, these ones have the big red M uh, decals on them and they're all one piece. Now these things took a substantial amount of microsol to get them to sort of sit down. And what I ended up having to do is take a scalpel and actually cut them just a little bit on the side so that it would actually bed down better. And it's far from perfect. I'll try and get in uh, nice and close. You can see there's a couple of bits where it's a, a bit problematic. The detail is raised quite high, so it takes a bit for that decal to sort of go over all those contours. That's another one to just watch out for. And <clears throat> I literally probably did about 
five or six coats of Microsol. I know you can get more aggressive uh, decal, you know, other brands of the equivalent of Microsol that'll be more aggressive, but I prefer to do it with a, you know, Microsol, which is not as strong, um, but do it in multiple coats. Now, the last sort of problematic area uh, of decals are the ones on the lower legs. So you can see the example of this one I've done here. And I'm reasonably happy with the way that came out. The main problem is this bit in here, this raised detail. Because again, that raised detail is quite high. So it takes a bit of Microsoft to sort of really get it to sit in there. The other um, thing that I learnt when I did the Tomahawk was that the, the decals are presented this way as three separate pieces. Now, down the bottom here, where you see that gap between the small and the larger piece, there's carrier film that sort of sticks out past the printed area that is really problematic when you're trying to sit this down. So um, what I do is I actually cut those round uh, edges out. So we take a scalpel. So you can see I've gone right around that edge there, cut off the um, the carrier film that hangs over the edge. I've done the same thing on this bit here. And then they're all ready to go in for a soak. The decals themselves are really good. They're probably a little bit on the thick side, but they're quite tough. Uh, they can take a little bit of punishment. The printing on them is really good. You know, there's no sort of registration issues or anything like that, so good clean detail. So I'm gonna let that sit and soak. And then we're going to come back to this one um, and take our very sharp blade and just run it down that edge, down the middle there. So you see, I'll put that cut in. And that means that I'll be able to take these two halves apart again. So I'm just gonna put a little bit more Microsol in there so that way now it will sink right down into that, that panel line. And I'll let that I'll let the Microsoft work its magic. But like I said, the rest of the decals are pretty straightforward, plenty of flat surfaces. These round ones are a little bit tricky, but you know, once you get them down, you can sort of maneuver them around. The other thing that I did was I put these two uh, bracket pieces on so that I could sort of see where they where they sit. But it doesn't actually matter that much. They um, There's a little bit of play in those decals. You can see this one I've got on a little bit crooked. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's... I can't think of any model that I've done where there hasn't been at least one decal, you know, sort of gone on crooked. Um, that's just the nature of the beast, I think. So, the other thing that I've just noticed, and I've done this on the other one, is this yellow line here goes over this raised detail. So I'm just going to put a bit of a cut in there and then again go in with the microsol now remember the ultimate goal is to have the decals sit as flat as possible so it looks like they're painted details as opposed to 
<coughs> yeah, stickers put on. And we can see on this piece that now those two halves have really sunk into that panel line. So that's good. And that means when I put those two pieces back together, um, everything will match up perfectly. Of course, I've included this. This is uh, these two halves are just, you know, press fit. I just pressed them in as tight as I could, um, but they're not glued or anything. So back to the lower leg. I'm going to start with the smallest decal first because this will help to set up the angle for the rest of it. Should be using uh, microset. We can help a little bit. Uh, I think we should go up. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, so that sort of helps to set up the angle for the other bit that sort of matches up and, and goes that way. And I want to show you just quickly in the instructions. The, the indication that they've provided is actually not really accurate. So, so we can see here, they've sort of shown what it looks like, but the, the truth is that this decal is actually a lot wider than what they represent there. So just be aware of that. It does fit, but it's a lot tighter than what they've represented in the instructions. Okay, so the next one I'm gonna do is the, the large strip. And this one tends to be the trickiest one to sort of manoeuvre because it's a it's an odd odd shape. And actually, very carefully use my fingers. Now I'm going to bring in the other one just to compare the angle. And this one isn't quite finished yet, but what I want to do is try and make sure I get them because there's no real indication on the panels. Um, as to sort of where these things start and finish as far as the angle goes. So you sort of just got to, you know, commit to something and then that's what you end up with on you know, both sides. So you notice there's this massive fold here. Would have been nice if they'd sort of cut out this piece as well. But we're going to deal with that once we get some microsole on here and it softens up. We can go in there and actually cut it so that it will conform more to the, um, the shape. Which is what's sort of going on here. You can see that it's all wrinkled around that top edge and I've just started sort of putting uh, cuts in it to make sure that it beads down properly. And you might be asking, well, is it easier to mask it off and actually paint it on? I don't think so. They're really quite odd shapes. I don't know, I think you'd have a lot of trouble masking this and actually doing it with paint. I mean, if you, you know, if you take your time with it and um, you're using the microsole you know, in stages, you can get a decent result. Okay, so what we're after is something that looks, you know, similar on both sides. I think I'm actually pretty happy with that. I'm happy to commit to that. All right, that's better. Okay, so time for the microsole. I'm going to 
sake, this thing in Microsoft. You really want to get it under each all of the edges so that it seeps underneath and pulls the decal down. Especially around this area here. Alright, so I'm going to lay that for a bit to soften. And if I go back to this one, I'm just going to put a little bit more on there. And then I might go in with a, a knife. And I'm just making very small sort of cuts a little bit at a time. You do want to be careful because it will, given that you put microsol on it, it makes the decal very soft. So you don't want to go in there and hack away at it because it will tear the decal. I'm just trying to flatten out some of these air bubbles that I've got. Now it looks a bit rough at the moment. You can sort of see, you know, where my little cuts are on the top of that round detail. But once we put a panel line around that, that will be less of an issue. So I'm going to put some microsol back on that. You can see, you know, I tend to go through this Microsoft stuff. I tend to uh, use it quite a bit. And the other thing that I can do is that there's, uh, I don't know if they're bolt details or rivet details. Um, so I'm just going to make a sort of small sort of bit of an incision just around those. Just to allow that microsol to sort of really bed down. Now ultimately what you really want to end up with is something that sort of looks you know, kind of like this. Okay. It looks a little bit rough on the top of that round detail but you know, overall the decals are nice and flat. You've still got that sort of rivet detail that the panel liner will pick up on. And that's what you're kind of aiming for. And it's just about patience as all it is, you know. Do a bit of micro salt, leave it for a while, um, come back to it, check it again. So that's basically it for, uh, for me as far as the decals go. They were the last couple of decals I needed to put on. There are some spare bits and pieces on the decals in case you're interested. Um, so it's got this sort of block of red, which I guess you can use if you need to patch up any of the red on the missile doors. They also provide you a couple of extra yellow lines for the you know, borders around the, the missile pods. Uh, you also get a lot of uh, numbers, a couple of different sizes, which um, you know, I guess if you want to do different sizes for, uh, if you want to do different number um, identification numbers, you, you've got plenty of choice there. So they're always worth hanging on to for other kits. And the last one is the UN Spacey logo. They give you two versions of this. Um, the other one's reverse, which is the one that I've sort of used. Uh, I believe it goes on the main body, um, the body section or the, the torso section. So that's sort of what's left after I've done all the other decals. And you'll probably get to see, you'll get a bit more of an idea how many decals go on this kit, because it's not really that many, um, but once I start the assembly. So the next step for me is to basically go through and gloss coat over the decals that I put down. And I will be using a panel line wash. I'll just be using the Tamiya Accent Panel Line Black. Um, it looks a bit cartoony but it's what I did on the Tomahawk so I want to match that style and then I'll give everything a flat coat 
I don't think I need to show panel lining. I think that's pretty straightforward. I've done that in enough of my videos. Um, there's nothing sort of amazing about this kit that makes it any different to others when it comes to panel lining. So I'll leave it there for this video. And the next video will be, you know, I'll have it all matte coated, all ready to go, do the assembly and the final reveal. So thanks for watching and I will catch you later.